Ronaldo Luis Nazario de Lima is a player that needs little to no introduction to football fans. Considered by many to be the greatest centre forward of all time, this two-time World Cup and Ballon d'Or winner, who previously hung up his boots in 2011 after numerous injury complications, has returned to the great sport. But he isn't at a top European or Brazilian club, he's not even in the professional game anymore. Instead, he now plays for English Sunday league side Phoenix FC. The big question, obviously, is how did this bona fide football legend get to the position of playing for a non-league team? And that's what we're going to find out in this video. Before we do, fire a shot at that subscribe button, ring the bell for notifications, and also don't forget to like this video and comment your thoughts below with your favourite moment from Ronaldo's career. Ronaldo was nicknamed O Phenomeno for a reason. He was truly phenomenal in his career from start to finish. As a young boy, he was so talented that he could turn down offers from clubs like Sao Paulo. Eventually, he made his professional debut for a senior team at Cruzeiro, where he scored 44 goals in 47 appearances, leading them to their first ever Copa de Brazil in 1993. This earned him a spot in the 1994 Brazilian World Cup squad, despite only being 17 years old, but he went on to win the first of his two World Cups in the USA. With the advice of fellow Brazilian legend Romário, he joined PSV Eindhoven in 1994, where he netted 30 league goals in his debut season. PSV won the Dutch Cup in 96, and Nazario departed the club with 44 goals in 58 games. An incredible achievement for anyone to achieve, let alone a teenager. And as he aged, he only continued to deliver and deliver. In the summer of 1996, after a tug of war between Barcelona and Inter Milan, the Catalan signed the Brazilian for a then world record transfer fee of $19 million. Despite only spending a single season in Spain because of contract disputes, he made his mark at FC Barcelona. This was him at his physical peak as he put 47 goals in the back of the net in only 49 games. Insane numbers in his debut season. At the end of the year, he became the youngest player to win the FIFA Player of the Year award. Jose Mourinho described him as the greatest player he had ever seen, but it was the following year that he got his crowning achievement. Following contract issues at Barcelona, Inter Milan, who were interested in signing him the summer before, decided to break the world transfer record for a second year in a row, signing the Brazilian forward for $27 million. Ronaldo won the Serie A Player of the Year, the FIFA Player of the Year, and most of all, his first Ballon d'Or, becoming the first Brazilian to do so. He was also named Player of the Tournament at the 1998 World Cup in France, and if he hadn't got concussed just before the final, he may have won a second World Cup trophy that year. One of the key problems with Ronaldo's career was the sheer amount of injuries he suffered. Even today, football pundits continue to wonder what his career could have been if he hadn't suffered as many injuries as he did. These injuries began in 1999 when he suffered numerous knee issues. One of them was so bad that he needed surgery and had to miss the entire 2000-2001 season. Before the first injury, he had scored 42 goals in 58 games in the best league in the world defensively. Eventually, he departed Inter in the summer of 2002 after recovering from surgery. Following rehab, Ronaldo returned to play in the 2002 World Cup, where he helped Brazil win the tournament. In this competition, he led the front line with Ronaldinho and Rivaldo, forming the deadly R trio that was named to the All-Star team. This was when Ronaldo debuted the new haircut that apparently gave him superpowers. O Phenomeno scored in almost every single game, getting eight in total. On the back of this, Ronaldo won his second Ballon d'Or and the fourth Ballon d'Or by a Real Madrid player. Despite missing the early parts of the domestic season through injury, he still scored 23 league goals and helped Los Blancos win the La Liga title. The next season, he beat that total by another two, winning the Pichichi Trophy in a season which Real lost the league title to Valencia. Despite recurring injuries in his final two seasons in Madrid, he left the Bernabeu with over 100 goals in total. In many ways, these injuries played a role in him never winning the Champions League. His weight issues also led to the then Real Madrid manager dropping him. Yet, he still proved far more effective than the likes of Eden Hazard ever could with their weight issues. He joined AC Milan in January 2007, but couldn't celebrate the Champions League win with them because he wasn't registered. 
In February 2008, he suffered a season-ending injury that later led to his release from AC Milan. Whilst at AC Milan, he was also diagnosed with hypothyroidism, which played a role in his weight. After leaving AC Milan, he trained with his favourite club Flamengo to recover from injury, but signed with their rivals Corinthians instead. A controversial choice that led to outrage, including angry fans burning Ronaldo shirts outside. This return to the sport would be short-lived, however. Injuries and weight issues continued to take their toll on the striker and it got to a point where he wasn't particularly reliable anymore. He scored 12 league goals in his debut season for Corinthians and signed a contract extension. Sadly, in February 2011, he announced his retirement from football at 35 years of age. The Corinthians doctor debunked the hypothyroidism, but it was clear Ronaldo's body couldn't handle the injuries. Compared to his Brazilian colleague Ronaldinho, R9 has stayed relatively out of controversy. Still, he has the Brazilian genes, of course. He loves to party, womanize and have fun. He infamously invited three cross-dressing male prostitutes to a motel whilst at AC Milan. His love life up until marrying his current partner had also been rocky. He divorced MTV VJ, Daniela Cicerelliella after a miscarriage and a luxurious wedding that cost almost a million euros. In 2010, while still married, he took a paternity test that confirmed he had an illegitimate son named Alexander with a waitress he met in Tokyo. He had a vasectomy two years later, claiming that four children was enough. Like former teammate David Beckham and other prominent retired footballers, Ronaldo stayed in the game but on the business side. He bought 51% of all shares of Spanish side Real Valladolid for 30 million euros in 2021. He bought a controlling stake in his very first football club, Cruzeiro, hoping to take them back to where they should be. That should be it for Ronaldo, but sitting behind a desk wasn't enough for the Brazilian. So, back to the beginning. Ronaldo, now 47 years old, appeared in a Sunday league game for Phoenix FC, an amateur football team that sat bottom of the NWL Division 8 in Essex. He came on with the team 4-0 down, but unfortunately, this was a far cry from the Ronaldo that tore up the defences of any team he was previously up against. He was caught offside, caught using his phone, and subbed back off by the manager, Brian Edwards. Far from Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's super sub performances in the 1999 season. But while the performance underwhelmed as expected, why did he do this and should we expect more of this? The answer to the latter is no. Ronaldo hasn't signed anything with the team and the appearance was simply a one-off. He wasn't even registered as Ronaldo, instead using the name Dave Walsh. But why though? Well, the answer is Paddy Power. Yes, Ronaldo's appearance was a scripted appearance by Paddy Power to launch their new betting feature, Super Sub. Both the commercial and the video of him playing are online, and if you haven't seen them, do go and watch them. They're worth your time, I promise. And so that wraps up this video on how the greatest striker of all time went from two Ballon d'Ors to playing on a cold morning in Essex. Regardless of the circumstances, you can't deny this was a big moment not only for those playing, but the people in attendance too. And in the end, that's what football is all about. The moments and decades after his debut, Ronaldo continues to bless us with his moments. We hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like, comment and share. Also hit that subscribe button, ring the bell and I'll see you in the next one.